Hello everyone again, I will now present soft constraint lion processing. So once we know which indicator we are going to work with, with which thresholds we are going to use and the weight by which we are going to multiply each layer, we can start with the processing of the different layers. To start with the processing of the layer, the first step is to download them, or if you work with Google S Engine, you will have to search for them and add them as an asset in your Google Earth account. In the main project, we performed a processing flow in which each soft indicator was processed independently. In the figure, we present an example of the processing flow for three indicators. First, the raster values are reclassified according to the previous section described thresholds, where layers with two or three values are obtained. The raster classification involves a modification of the value of an image in whole or in a park, grouping the value presented by the input image into user-defined range classification. Afterward, the pixel value are multiplied by the weight calculated from the PCL. And finally, we obtain raster layer with three values representing the three marginality range, high, low, potentially, um, potentially unsustainable land. It may be the case that for the same indicator there is information from the topsoil and the subsoil. In the case of the male project, they were considered as independent indicators since originally this soil layer were formed and developed differently. Even their characteristic could have been influenced by the land use. The, these indicators uh, with topsoil and subsoil were coarse fragments just to clay sand, churchill available water and soil organic marble. In the processing of the soft indicator, there may be exceptions. For example, in the main project, some exception involved the preparation of a data set before applying the workflow we have just explained. For example, the first exception is the soil indicator, the, uh, soil indicator sorry, test tool, which is sustained by applying the equation proposed by Elbersen et al. 2018, where seal test tool is added twice the clay test tool. The second exception is the read the index, which relates a cumulative precipitation and reference evapotranspiration. In May, we use the high resolution model to a climate data set for 2018 available on Google Earth Engine. In the figure on the right, you have the Google Earth Engine code to perform the read the index to the, uh, for the year 2018. In summary, to obtain a single value per pixel per year, the 12 uh, 2018 images are filtered, then the precipitation and evapotranspiration bands are selected, followed by the division between the precipitation and evapotranspiration band. bands. Uh, finally, the annual mean value is calculated for each pixel. So, after processing all the layers, of all indicators, we have to overlay them, and please, it is important to follow a series of recommendations. For example, that all the layers have the same spatial resolution and are projected in the same reference system. In the main project, we use the nearest neighbor method as a pixel size of 10 by 10 meters, which it is the spatial resolution of the highest resolution product, Sentinel-2 Global Land Cover, used as a base map in other phases of the project. In addition, all layers were projected to the horizontal coordinate system ETRS-89 using the Lambert Asimutal Equal Area Projection. Here are the documents that have been cited during the presentation and I highlight the document where you will find the complete methodology. Thank you and see you in the next video.